Welcome to our study in the book of Exodus. We're in the golden calf chapter. Uh, you know, there should be a chord of gloom that sounds as we uh, move into this chapter. But listen to verse 7, and we're just picking up the story where we left it yesterday morning. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Go down at once, for your people whom you brought up from the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. So we've followed this story, and I won't recount everything from the previous mornings, but this is the first that Moses hears about what's going on. Moses has been faithfully up with God in the, at the top of the mountain, uh, receiving God's commandments and his instructions. And now God tells him, uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to put a hold on this. You go down and help the people because they've, they've just corrupted themselves. God tells Moses, go down at once, the people that you brought up. Not that God's disowned them utterly just yet. I mean, that's what's on the point of happening. But Moses has been put in charge of these people. And now his leader, his second in command has failed. And so now God tells Moses, we're going to put a hold on this. You go down and address this immediately. So Moses is kind of speechless here. He doesn't have anything to say. He's, he's probably shocked and stunned at this terrific, uh, sad, amazing development. Let me share a little note from Sarda in the JPS Bible commentary right here. The calf, even if only intended as the pedestal of the invisible God of Israel, was very much an image of a living entity. It would inevitably divert human attention to itself and away from the invisible one that it was meant to invoke. The popular mind would regard the image, pedest the pedestal, as an object endowed with divinity. By putting God back into nature, the people violated and nullified the fundamental directive the, pardon me, the fundamental distinctive idea of the religion of Israel. Now that's Sarna's Bible commentary, page 204. Yeah, by making a physical representation of God when God says, ah, uh -uh, don't do that. That's the one thing we're not going to do around here. And, and now the people have got Aaron to do it. By doing that thing, they've placed God back into nature. And it was already a problem. It was already a tendency for the fallen human to, you know, look for something physical, something that we can touch and follow that way. So yes, this is uh, this is pro highly problematical. This is a, a immediate repudiation of the covenant that they haven't even got. You know, they haven't even got their copy yet. You know, it's still coming from the photocopier. It's still coming down from the mountain. So this is a tragic situation. Do you think it takes us long to corrupt ourselves? Apparently not. Uh, these guys did it right away. And you can understand, I'm not excusing it, no excuse at all. They're coming out of uh, Egyptian heathenism and pantheism and uh, polytheism. So, yeah, I get that. But they just had some pretty firm instructions, you know, when they heard the Ten Commandments on the mountain. And now Moses is, they've made a covenant, an agreement, and Moses is getting the details. And, uh, but yeah, they've already abandoned that and they're, they're, uh, they're packing, maybe packing for Egypt. So we'll carry on tomorrow morning and see what happens next.